What's up everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Sit Down Saturday. Today we're going to talk about should we be putting the fun in crowdfunding? I don't have my coffee cup. Shout out to Chris from West Virginia. He left his sweatshirt here at Skull Fest, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep this as well. I, I think it was a gift. That's not as funny, is it? He's from West Virginia, so it's got a big West Virginia state picture on the back of it. And Maryland has a lot of state pride. So we can go outside wearing stuff like this, but I figure I could put it on for a video. I'm too old for somebody to try to put me in park in these streets. Just let me stay in neutral. I'm fine. So let's talk about crowdfunding. We're seeing it more and more. I'm sure it's been done numerous times, but I can't remember what came first recently, like for big crowdfunding events. Was it the MMC Art Fire or the Unrustables? I think they changed their name for, you know, not to offend children born out of wedlock. And then we saw it most recently with Moss Toys Tetra Jets. So the MMC Art fire one. We all know that MMC likes a repaint. And we got Inferno, Grapple, Green One, Hauler, I think it was supposed to be this one, and Takara had one coming. So I understand the angle there. Takara's a big horse to put yours against. And they were already competing with Make Toys as well. So I can understand playing that hand very cautiously. And then we had the Unrustables, and I think that was more independent. Although they're highly linked with Moss Toys, obviously, and then they're linked with MMC kind of in a way, like not directly, but past experiences with some of the designers and so forth, which was obvious and a lot of the engineering and such. So I get the impression that they kind of know their way around the business end of it. They know their way around the scene and they were kind of using avenues to sort of get themselves up and started. I also think that was interesting because it was an original property. So it was really testing the waters for that. And I think they sold well. I mean, they obviously made their goals and were able to release the product. And it was a good product, so, although I'm still coming for that skull face money. But I was glad to see them succeed. And then we have the Tetra Jets from Moss Toys. Now, as you know, I did some box art for them. The only box art I've done, mind you. Moss Toys is another one that, when you see at the conventions, and you can kind of see that they know their way around the industry as well. But I get the impression that maybe this Tetra Jet thing became a little bit more ambitious than they had initially expected, and they maybe weren't quite prepared to cover their production costs, so they put that up. I wish the best for them as well. Now let's talk about the crowdfunding thing more philosophically. I've been hanging out with Adam too much. I think it has its place. I do think it comes with some responsibility. Let's, let's dive into this a bit. So for up and starting companies, I think it's great because it doesn't require that initial buy-in and wealth to kind of get started and it allows the platform for creative people that have a passion and a vision to create something for the market that the market would obviously be interested in with little to no risk because you're getting all that money up front and then their money is being put towards a mass retail release so hopefully you're getting more money on the back end but the cost of expenses is already covered so you kind of come out of the gate ready to rock and roll in the profits which hopefully will help fund your next project if it's quality and you can move forward cool in the game then there's the established companies that feel like they're taking a risk like the art fire this i think comes down to circumstance i think that these particular sets of circumstances for the art fire made sense because there is a lot of risk versus benefit or reward on their end. But I think it does show weakness. Weakness is a tricky beast because the world is filled with predators. And if you show a crack in your armor, somebody's going to try to exploit it. Have you guys ever seen True Romance? There's a scene in True Romance where a young, fairly straight-laced lad ventures into the criminal world and has his first encounter. And upon that first encounter with a character named Drexel, Drexel's eating some Chinese food, and Drexel says, Have yourself a seat, boy. We got everything here from a diddle eye Joe to damned if I know. And Clarence responds with, No thanks. And Drexel responds with, No thanks. What does that mean? I think you're too scared to be eating. See, if you'd have came in here and started chowing down, I'd have said to myself, this mother he's scaring down like he ain't got a care in the world, and who knows? Maybe he don't. Maybe this fool's just a bad mother He don't got to worry about nothing. He just sit down, watch my mother TV. See? You ain't even sat down yet. And I say that to say this. Sometimes posturing is important. Sometimes coming out of the gate swinging at Mike Tyson is more respectable and defendable than asking for a handicap in the sport. It's about how you project and are perceived by the rest of the community. 
MMC has a pretty stellar reputation overall and a long history in this game, but I think it showed the industry they're not really prepared or able to deal with a hard L, which ultimately is fine because it ultimately got funded. So it shows that the consumer base and the support is still there for this company and its endeavors, but had it not. So there's still some risk. The risk is different. It's not financial, it's stature, but the risk is there. But it's good that they made it. And then there's the Tetrajet situation. I've recently gone on to that link to see how it was doing, and they seem to be on their way, and I wish them the best. But what I did notice was there was a lot of comments and questions in like the little forum area, and they were responding to each and every one. Let's dive into this. I do think if you are crowdfunding, you owe that sort of response. And I applaud them for doing it because here's the difference. The people that do support your crowdfunding are no longer your customers. They're now investors. And that should be a different relationship. And this is why I really wanted to broach this subject because I'm hoping that word gets out. I know for a fact that some of my material is watched by these companies. So I wanted to offer this piece of advice. The gears have to be switched when your customers become your investors. In a customer relationship, you owe them a quality product. They're supporting you, they're putting their hard earned money on the line in the hopes that you will deliver a fine product in return. That is the relationship. In the Transformers fandom, we're lucky enough and at times entitled enough to feel like we deserve replacement parts for every little thing that could go wrong, which I don't subscribe to. There is personal accountability and responsibility and we all should take that. But we do feel that way. And some of these companies humor us and pacify us with replacement parts and such, and that's awesome. But in a crowdfunding scenario, the relationship is different. The relationship is now I am investing in your company so that you can produce a product, both for me to enjoy and to allow you to get it out to mass retail to profit from. So here is how I feel about the crowdfunding thing. If you are proposing a crowdfunding venture, and I'm interested, I will support your crowdfunding venture. There should always be a risk-free guarantee to the customer base that you get your money back if the product is unsuccessful in its crowdfunding. Number two, the communication should be flawless. The customer base is no longer looking for handouts. The customer base are now investors, and you owe them information. They are now literally entitled to it. So every question, comment, courtesy, or concern should be met from the corresponding company immediately and transparently. And that's why I applaud them for doing it. And I think that anybody who uses that platform should show the same fortitude. I've recently said in Sit Down Saturdays prior to this, that especially in the G1 Masterpiece line, we're reaching the more sketchy characters. We're reaching the less popular characters the less known characters. This Magic Square company is gonna release this masterpiece Optimus and they're gonna do just fine. Do you know why? Because it's Optimus. And when it comes to Optimus, there's money to go around. But when it comes to Horrible, there may not be. I think there's an opportunity here for us fans to say, look, we want the Horrible. We want the Fangries. We want the Autobot and Decepticon clones. And it allows the company a risk-proof scenario to provide those products that are less known, less popular, and less in demand, perhaps. I think there's an angle here for a lot of companies to take advantage of if they want to. But the customer base needs to be treated like investors more than customers because they are allowing you to produce this product to profit. Every relationship is give and take. It doesn't matter if it's your wife, husband, son, daughter, brother, sister, best friend, worst enemy. But the scales of those give and takes alter depending on the circumstances and dynamics of that relationship. And once I provide money for you to make a product to profit from, our relationship has changed. And as long as everybody's on the same playing field, that could be a beautiful thing. But I think at that point, everything needs to be transparent and communication needs to be paramount. But it could allow us opportunities that we wouldn't normally otherwise have. Now, let me throw the curveball. We just recently saw Hasbro do the same thing with a four foot long 3.75 sail barge from Jabba's Palace with a $500 price tag that would eat up a considerable amount of shelf space at a retail store. So what retail stores are we looking at? Toys R Us, Walmart, and Target. Wait, what was the first one? It's just Walmart and Target now. And it, are Walmart and Target even willing to provide that sort of space in a Hasbro toy line in the boys aisle that doesn't perform like it used to? I'm not sure. 
So crowdfunding may have been the only way to go about this or a private sale through Hasbro Toy Shop that they try to pretend is not Hasbro, which is kind of like a Nike outlet trying to pretend it's not Nike. But I went in, I supported it, and I think it can offer a lot of interesting things in the future. A Unicron could be on the table. If they can make a four foot long sale barge, I bet you they can make a four foot tall Unicron. There's a lot of things to consider, but this isn't an independent company trying to get started. And this isn't a small established company trying to watch their risk benefit analysis. This is a major toy corporation that produces some of our favorite franchise lines, but also produces Magic the Gathering, also produces Nerf, that I'm sure bring in the bucks every year. So should we have to consume any of the risk for them? Are they in the same position? Should we view that differently? And I don't know. I have opinions on the matter, which is probably not. A company of that stature would have had to been supported for so long that they would be in a place where sometimes you gotta take a risk. I believe it was once the famous Jack Napier who said, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. But I'm not opposed to it either. If the entire company's philosophy is to not take risks in that regard and therefore this is the only way that you could get these products because they have to answer to shareholders mastermind doesn't Moss toys doesn't so i'm curious what your thoughts are in regard to hasbro doing it as well and comparing those two dynamics which is interesting it's a funny world we live in a wise man once told me the greatest advice of my life which is let the circumstances dictate your actions. And as long as you can qualify and justify your actions based on the circumstances, you're golden. So just a quick recap, a major toy corporation has done it at a $500 price point, which I'm okay with only circumstantially. We saw MMC do it, I think in a bit of a panic as to whether or not it was going to be successful and worth their money, time, and effort. And then we saw the Unrustable Bastards do it. Once again, I don't know how the communication was, but I have shook hands with those gentlemen in real life and they've all been extremely forthcoming and open. I also got a chance to review their product that I contacted a lawyer or two about. Bing! And it stood up. Had I been interested in that product and I put my money up, I would have been very satisfied with that result. And now we have Moss Toys attempting it. And from what I see so far, they've been very transparent and very forthcoming with information and very good about communication and responses. So I guess what I'm getting at ultimately is I'm okay with it as long as the actions match the circumstances or vice versa. The companies need to be forthcoming with information. They need to treat the consumer more like an investor with that level of respect, dignity, and partnership. And I think it's a great opportunity for even established third-party companies to take chances on more risky characters that we all would love to have but are worried we'll never get. But if those same folks that talk a good one about what they would buy and what they wouldn't buy don't put their money up. It's going to damage the integrity, reputation of the company. It's going to damage our ability to get certain characters because let's say if Fans Toys puts out a crowdfunder for Fangry and it doesn't meet the economic requirements, not only does Fans Toys fail at making that product, other companies are going to look at that and say, it won't work. So it'll be time for people to put their money where their mouth is. Give and take relationships. That's the key to it all. And as long as everybody acts accordingly, I think I've come around to being a supporter of the idea. But I'm interested in what you think, and I'm pretty sure they're interested in what you think. So let it be known. And look, real quick, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna stop wasting your time. And I'm not a kumbaya type of guy. I've never sat around with an acoustic guitar and sang a song with anybody, least of all by a fire pit. But there's a lot of toxicity in these fandoms. I'm seeing it in Star Wars fandom, I'm seeing it in the Transformer fandom. Criticizing a product is one thing. Being hateful, negative, sometimes even threatening to community members is another thing. Love this stuff like a child and hate it like an adult. Because I guarantee you, when you pump out that amount of negative energy on a daily basis, you will reap what you sow. The toys, protect the community. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Till next time, take care.